Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. French President Emmanuel Macron urges the international community to maintain dialogue with the Iranian people as the Islamic Republic enters the 10th day of street protests against the Ayatollah regime. The leader of Lebanon's Shiite militia Hezbollah, Saeed Hassan Nasrallah, says that the Syrian war now in its seventh year will end within one or two years at most. Israel's parliament, the Knesset, gave preliminary approval for legislation that would make it easier for courts across the Jewish state to impose a death sentence on assailants convicted of murder in a text classified as terrorism. French President Emmanuel Macron urged the international community to maintain dialogue with the Iranian people as the Islamic Republic entered today the 10th day of massive street protests. President Macron, who earlier in the day spoke with his Iranian counterpart, Hassan Rouhani, stressed the importance of restraint in dealing with the current unrest and criticized comments made by the leaderships in the United States, Israel and Saudi Arabia against the Ayatollah regime in Tehran, which they view as the key instigator of instability across the Middle East. C'est pourquoi je crois profondément qu'il nous faut les différents piliers de la relation que j'évoquais, nucléaire, balistique, stratégique et régionale avec l'Iran, mais qu'il nous faut poursuivre le dialogue culturel, linguistique, académique et économique avec la société iranienne. Le faire dans un cadre conjoint, évidemment au niveau européen, et je le souhaite très fortement avec nos partenaires américains, Et je pense que cette ouverture que nous offrons ainsi à la société civile et économique iranienne est indispensable collectivement. Turkey has also joined in warning against external parties attempting to interfere in Iran's domestic politics, asserting that such actions could provoke a backlash. Bizim için İran'ın istikrarı, barışı, huzuru son derece önemlidir. Birileri dışarıdan İran'ı karıştırmaya çalışıyor ise bunun ancak ters tepeceğini bir kez daha ifade etmemiz gerekir. Dışarıdan yapılan açıklamalarla, atılan tweetlerle İran toplumunun barışını, huzurunu bozmaya yönelik müdahaleleri kabul etmediğimizi bir kez daha buradan ifade etmek istiyoruz. It is important to know that Turkey's ties with Iran expanded last year, while Ankara's relations with Tehran's international opponents, including the United States, Israel and Saudi Arabia, all deteriorated. With regard to Europe's stance on the developments in Iran, while most EU member states have stated a reserved position, urging for an end of violence while warning of any external interference that could deteriorate the situation, the European Commission announced it was closely following the ongoing demonstrations across Iran and warned the Islamic Republic that peaceful demonstrations and freedom of expression are fundamental rights that apply to every country, with no exceptions. I would also then like to recall that yesterday the High Representative Vice President Mogherini issued a statement on behalf of the European Union on the situation in Iran, underlining that the EU is closely following the ongoing demonstrations in the country, the increase of violence and the unacceptable losses of human lives. For the EU, human rights have always been a core issue in our relationship with Iran, and peaceful demonstration and freedom of expression are fundamental rights that apply to every country, and Iran is no exception. Meanwhile, the United Nations human rights chief called on the Islamic Republic of Iran to rein in security forces to avoid further violence and respect the rights of protesters to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. A spokeswoman for the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights confirmed that their office had received reports that more than 20 people had been killed and hundreds more arrested across Iran in the past week alone. Well, I think for us it's important that the Iranian authorities respect the rights of the people who have been demonstrating, the people who have been detained, and that includes guaranteeing their right to life. And what we're doing is we're urging the authorities to make sure that the security forces make a concerted effort to police protests with care, with proportionality and with due necessity in accordance with international law. 
There have been disturbing reports of violence and of deaths, and we're urging the Iranian authorities to ensure that there are independent, thorough and effective investigations into all forms of violence that may have taken place. The protests, which began over economic hardships, have taken on a rare political dimension, with a growing number of young people calling on Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei to step down. The demand, however, has prompted a harsh crackdown by the regime, which has reportedly arrested thousands of protesters since the rally started 10 days ago. Iranian officials in Tehran vowed to use all measures necessary to crack down on protesters as the rallies are the biggest demonstrations recorded in the Islamic Republic since unrest in 2009 that followed the disputed re-election of then-president Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Now with regard to the conflict in Syria, the leader of the Lebanese Shiite militia Hezbollah said that the Syrian conflict, now in its seventh year, will end within one or two years at most. Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of the Iranian-backed militia, stressed that without any surprises or significant changes in the region, the bloody war in Syria, which claimed hundreds of thousands of lives, might even end in the near future. In an interview with Lebanon's pro-Iranian al mayadin network, Nasrallah also claimed that Israeli strikes on Hezbollah positions in Syria did not and will not prevent supplies of weapons from reaching the group in Lebanon as the organization continues to arm itself for future confrontation with the Jewish state. <laughs> لم يمنع وصول الأسلحة إلى حزب الله هذا ما تريدون القول لم يمنع ولن يمنع أوكي. وهم يعرفون ذلك إن أنا هم ما عم بكشف معك سو يمكن أول مرة من حكى بالإعلام بهيك جواب لكن الإسرائيليون أنفسهم يعرفون ذلك حزب الله which joined the war in Syria to assure President Bashar Assad remains in power is viewed as a key element of Assad's survival and anticipated victory. Along with other Iranian-backed militias, Iran's Revolutionary Guards, and Russia's air support. Now back to Israel, where the country's parliament, the Knesset, gave preliminary approval for legislation that would make it easier for courts across the Jewish state to impose a death sentence on assailants convicted of murder in attacks classified as terrorism. Israeli military courts, which handle cases involving Palestinians in the West Bank, already have the power to issue the death sentence, although this has never been implemented. The only case of an execution in Israel was carried out against convicted Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann in 1962. The amendment to the penal code would still require three more readings if it is to become law. Currently, a death penalty can only be imposed if a panel of three military judges passes a sentence unanimously. If the amendment is adopted, a majority verdict would suffice. I think that in a simple way, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu voted for the motion but said that such legislation required more profound discussion and that the matter would now be considered at the ministerial level before further debate in the Knesset. Thank you for watching us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you again on Monday at the same time.
In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. First, press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.